If, for those of you who are taking the thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes uh, talking about the importance of replication. Before I do that, though, I want to draw your attention to the public folder that all of you should have access to. If you go to the Getting Started folder, you'll find the work schedule. And just to uh, remind you all that March 1st is going to be our due date for the literature review. So keep the schedule in mind. Just plan your or schedule your time accordingly, making sure that you try to finish for March 1st. That's when you'll get a, a receive a grade for the literature review. If you can finish early, I suggest that you try to finish a week early. That way we can have a week of revisions and additional feedback. Uh, if you can do that, you're assured to have a better end product uh, by March 1st. But otherwise, uh, we'll, I'll be looking and, and giving out grades on March 1st for your literature review. Also in the same folder, you'll find uh, course guidelines. We talked about these the first day of class, but uh, this sheet consolidates all that information nicely, so you might want to refer to that. Also, I want to draw your attention to the rubrics folder, where you'll find the oral defense, written thesis, and error code uh, list. You might want to take a look at this point at the written thesis um, rubric. And uh, we'll be talking more in terms of that as, as I give more detailed information or feedback to you as you uh, finalize your literature review. But also you might want to take a look at the error code list because also um, I'll be using these codes in your Google Docs. And uh, this is where you'll find a description for each of those codes. Of course, if I use any of the codes and you're not sure how to correct those, these are things we can talk about in our tutoring session or that you can ask about in your Google Docs. Okay, so replication. This morning I was listening to a podcast, uh, very interesting, in fact, and I, I was thinking about our group and uh, our prior discussions about replication. And they were talking about a phenomenon called the file drawer phenomena. And what that is, what this is, is a lot of researchers, what they'll do is they'll do a lot of res uh, research, they'll, they'll conduct a lot of studies, but many of the studies won't have positive results or results that um, are really uh, what many... Um, journals are really looking for. So what happens is they'll put it in the file drawer and they won't publish these and they'll only publish the few studies that have positive results. So this leads to a bias. And they were talking about in this podcast the importance of replication and replicating these studies. In fact, they did a study on replicating studies where they found that only 30 percent of the findings supported the original study verifying that there is, in fact, a clear bias in many of the results that are being published. So the point I want to make here is that replication is a good thing. And we talk from day one the importance of trying to find two to three articles that you can use, that you can replicate. And when I, when I mention replication, I'm talking in terms of the method section. So think, think about the demographic. Think about your participants. You can use the same uh, participants in the sense of their age maybe or their academic level, their English proficiency level, something maybe related to the social economic status. These are things that you can replicate in terms of your participants. You can also replicate instruments. So if you find an, a questionnaire or maybe even a conversational guide that you think or an observation sheet that others have used in studies, you can also use and or adapt those to your own study. This is another way that you can um, replicate or repeat uh, aspects of other studies. You can also replicate the procedure, so the way in which you collect the data. Maybe other researchers have conducted a certain questionnaire first, and then they interviewed, and then they did a, a focus group. Well, you could follow that same procedure in your own, uh, in your own context if, if you find that's the best way to do it. Finally, you can replicate the data analysis. So you can think about it in terms of how you analyze the data. If you're coding qualitative types of information or text, you can follow examples of how others have done that. Even descriptive statistics, if you're going to uh, do some sort of an analysis, you can follow how others have done it. So this is uh, what I want to share with you today is try to find ways that you can replicate other studies. Try to find at least two to three studies that you can use as a guide, as a model for your own purposes. Remember too that just because a study can't be replicated doesn't mean that it can't help serve 
uh, as support for your own literature review. So I've talked about this before. If you find a longitudinal study or a quantitative study that clearly are types of studies that you're not going to be doing, they still might have results that can support your argument. Remember, your literature review is, a, is an argument. It's an argumentative essay in a sense. So you need to be taking a position, and those positions, those claims need to have support that come from outside sources. So those outside sources can come from basically any type, any research design. If, if it's relevant to your argument, if the findings from those studies support your ideas, then, you're, uh, then you should use those. But when I say replication, I'm specifically referring to the method section that you, uh, that you are using to um, basically form ideas about how you can collect your data, the instruments, the participants that you're going to use, and so on. So I hope this helps. If you do have any questions, we can talk about it in our tutoring session, or you can also leave comments in your Google Docs and let me know to review your Google Doc if you want feedback uh, in, in that same uh, space. So I hope this helps, and we'll see everybody in their next tutoring session.